This is my 120 volt mega two power station, and this is an auto transformer. So I am running my entire house off of this 120 volt system, even though my house requires 240 volt power. So I'm able to run my well pump off of this setup, which is super impressive. I am also running my refrigeration and my kitchen, my big freezer and my garage, as well as the fridge in my garage. And of course I'm running my Wi-Fi security, all the essentials that I have for running around my house. Say if the power went out long term, I could literally run it off of this 120 volt solar generator because of this specific auto transformer. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I wired this up so that way you can do the same if you needed to do it. So basically what I have here is my Mega 2. Now this is one of my favorite, if not my all time favorite, portable setup. This is like less than 40 pounds. It's like 35 pounds, I think. The battery is even lighter. It connects through this cable on the side very easily and I can get 2,500 watts of output. Now they do also make a Mega 3 and a Mega 5 that has even more output. So if I were to redo this, I might get the Mega 3 so that I have a little bit more output and a little bit more battery on the main unit, but it still uses these B2 multi batteries. I have coupon codes and everything for all of this and I'll put them in the links down below, but if I have to use any unit portably, this is the one that I grab. The other main reason that I go with the Mega 2 and the B2 multi batteries is because you can have like up to 15 of these batteries on here. I think that's excessive. I wouldn't normally do that. But the biggest thing that I like about these is that with every single battery, you get the same solar input and it's rated to 2100 watts of solar input on this unit and the battery. So between these two, it's possible to get over 4000 watts of solar input. Now the simplest way of getting solar input is just by using 400 watt panels, just like what I'm using right here. So I've got four that can go into the main unit and then another four that can go into the battery. So collectively that's 3,200 watts of solar input. Since that's more than what I'm normally drawing in power, that means I can fully recharge my system while running the essentials of my house. So the simplest part of this whole system is just buying a power station. You can also build your own DIY solar power station. And I'll link a video at the end on how I did that. But this is the easiest option for just plug and play, pull it out of a box, connect a cable on the side, and I'm done. It's very simple. Now the next part is where it gets tricky, and that's how to wire this auto transformer. Now this is actually upside down right now, but that's because it has a flat top, and this section right here is where the huge copper coil is that allows this to convert 120 volt power, get spun up to 240 volt split phase power. Now split phase power is technically called 120 volt slash 240 volt split phase power. And that's because you're still getting 120 volt power out of this. You have two legs of 120 volt, but they're put into a split phase, meaning that you can get 240 volts from two 120 volt legs. Now I could not do the same if I just had two solar generators and just use them together. Now to make this totally clear, you cannot take a cable like this, which has two 30 amp RV plugs like you see here and one 50 amp plug because the way that this works is you have a hot neutral and ground on each of these. So in order to get 240 volt split phase power, you would need a hot and a hot and a neutral and a ground. But if I were to connect this just to two solar generators, all I would be getting is two 120 volt legs of power. I would not be getting split phase power. So do not think that you can just connect two of these together with a simple Y adapter and then be off to the races. The exception to this is if you're doing this in an RV. Now RVs use 50 amp power, but they don't use split phase 50 amp power. All it is is two separate legs of 120 volts. So in the case of a 50 amp RV, you could hook this up to two separate generators and get the 50 amps that you need because you don't need the split phase. But that doesn't work in this scenario. So you have to make sure you have an auto transformer. That's what this is here. Let me show you how we wire it up. The first thing to do is get this open. There are four screws on the front. They simply unscrew and then this top section slides in and out. It's a friction fit. Now, I bought this TT30P cable off of Amazon so that I didn't have to wire it myself. You have to be really careful scoring this outer sheathing because you do not want to expose any of the copper underneath. This gland here simply screws off and I'm going to get as tight of a fit as I can with this connection because I want it to be a nice clean tight fit. Strip the ends of the wires that's going to be the white, black and green that are here inside of the auto transformer. The black, it can go into either the L1 or L2 
on this left green box that's in the left side of the auto transformer. I'm just choosing to go on the right side. The neutral is going to be floating from that TT30 and here I'm making a pigtail. So I just took some excess wire and screw this into the N or the neutral port of that green box. We're gonna later tie those whites together, but I need to expose this four wire cable here. I bought this from Ace, it was not expensive, but this gives us an extra red wire compared to the black, white, and green wire that we saw in the other connection. This is a NEMA 1450R box. This is just a receptacle, and this is how I'm gonna to try to line it up on here. Using my knife, I'm going to score the outer edge of the cable and I'm going to break open the sheathing in order to get access to these cables. This gland tightens on and I'm going to go ahead and strip off the ends of these cables on both sides, both inside of the auto transformer and outside. Now these are some large wing nuts. These are rated for 14 to 6 gauge. And now I'm going to be tying all three of these whites together from the input and output all tied together as one neutral. I'm gonna be doing the same for the ground, so I need to make a pigtail that goes here on the right side. This yellow and green box on the right is where the ground goes for the 240 volt output. The three green cables inside the box now get tied together. The red I am putting on the left side. This is leg one output for the 240 volt. Make sure it is nice and tight. You do not want this coming loose. And then for the black, it's gonna go into this right open port for the second leg of the split phase power. Again, make sure it's nice and tight. Once you're done with all of it, give everything a tug. You do not want anything coming loose in here. That could cause some major shocks, not good. Here you can see all three green wires clearly wired together using that wing nut. Same with these whites. So each one gets a pigtail and then you have the whites and greens joined from the input and output. Now, because I got this receptacle from Ace Hardware, just trying to make things easy, I have to put on this friction fit piece right here. Again, I highly recommend just ordering a NEMA 1450R piece off of Amazon so you don't have to do all of this wiring yourself. This is not overly difficult, but it is a little bit of a pain. I'm just gonna try to get my wire management preset and this green wire, my ground, is going to go to this green nut or green bracket that's here on the top side or bottom side, whichever way you're looking at it, of this receptacle. Slides in and this flathead gets tightened on. Next is the neutral, which is right next to that. We're going to do the same thing, tighten it on. Now, the red and black are kind of universal. It doesn't matter if it goes on the left or the right side of this. I chose to put the red on the right, making sure it's nice and tight and the black on the left. These slide in really easy. This is not difficult. A beginner can definitely do this. And then once again, I'm gonna go through and make sure that everything is nice and tight. I do not want anything coming loose at any time as this gets moved and used over the years. This box is a little tricky and I lost the screw to holding it all together. And so I ended up having to tape it closed and trying to get the fit just right so that way it would hold together properly. You can see the tape on here and I'm gonna do a dry fit of this NEMA 1450P connection. Looks like it's working great. To put it back together, I just put the faceplate back in place by sliding it in and put these four screws in its place. And then I did a test and I put in 120 volts input and I was getting 234 volts output, which is perfectly fine. Now they do make a 32 amp and a 100 amp version and I paid for this all out of my own pocket, just to be clear, but they do make different sizes of this. I chose for my personal use to go with the 100 amp, even though I'm never going to be using 100 amps off of this. The reality is if you have really heavy loads in your house, such as central air conditioning, an electric dryer, an electric water heater, those pull really high amounts of energy. And it would really just be best to go with a different solar generator or DIY setup that's really capable of running the 240 volt split phase needs. Your best bet is just to go to poweredportablesolar.com, get a kit like I have here with these Apollos, get it in a split phase kit, which is basically gonna be like a silver or gold or higher. And if you need help with it all, just shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com and I'd be happy to help you answer the questions on what you need to run your house. But really what this comes down to is just having a TT30P connection on the auto transformer. That's this yellow piece here. And the simplest thing is like I showed in the video is just go buy a cable that you can pull this from. Basically just cut it off and rewire it. You could go to Home Depot or Ace or Lowe's and find this connection and wire it all yourself. 
but it ends up costing more than just getting a sacrificial cable and cutting it off. But in this case, I did go buy this black box from Ace Hardware, and it was a NEMA 1450R receptacle, and then I wired it up inside of here, as you just saw. And then all I do is I use this TT30 RV cable, which is just a standard RV cable. You can pick them up at Walmart. I have a 25 foot one right back here, and I just plug it into the output of my unit to the input of the auto transformer, then it's gonna to convert to the 240. Then here, because I'm using a NEMA 1450R receptacle, I have a NEMA 1450P right here on this end of this plug, and I actually made this cable myself, and then I added an L1430 connection here. So this white and black section is an L1430R, and then this green section, again, I just bought this cable on Amazon, is an L1430P. P just means plug and R just means receptacle. So where I see this working the most is running a well pump. And if you use a lot of propane or natural gas for heating in your house or for cooking, drying your clothes, heating your water, whatever it is, then this is a realistic option for getting split phase power to your house with a simple basic system. Now you can put a ton of solar on this. Again, that's why I like it, but I'm still gonna be limited to the output capacity of this system. There is also going to be an efficiency loss when you convert voltage you lose how much power you can actually get out of it at the end. So let's say I'm putting in 2,500 watts here. I may only get 2,300 watts output over here because of that conversion. And the reason it loses some of that power is just due to resistance and heat buildup inside of the unit. The thing I dislike the most about this setup is there's a loud buzzing noise in this. I don't know if you've been able to hear it as I've been talking, but this will make noise. And for some people, it's cause for concern. But this is no different than if you go to that green box outside your house that's making a humming noise. That's a power distribution box for the grid, and it makes a loud humming noise. This is just a mini version of that in order to have proper power going to your house. So this is applicable to people, for example, who have a Titan solar generator or a single Delta Pro, a single AC300 from Bluetti, a Jackery, a Goal Zero, whatever it is that you may have bought two or three, four years ago before there were ready-made systems with 240 volt split phase power. You could simply go buy this. I believe I bought this for around $500, maybe it was more and then go buy the connections. So easily for less than 600 to 700 bucks, you should be able to upgrade your system to run the basics of your house. Most importantly, what this facilitates is being able to run power to all of the outlets and all of the light switches in my house. There are really three main things that I personally look for in an emergency preparedness backup power station. The first is I want water. I just like having water at the tap, whether that's for doing dishes and cleaning them in the sink, drinking water, taking a cold shower, whatever it is. Secondly, I really like having hot water. Now in my case, I use propane, so I can run my propane heater no problem because it's not a large load on this. If I had an electric water heater, this would not be able to handle it at all. You would literally need four of these Apollos like I've got set up here, which is capable of running an electric water heater. But thirdly, I simply like having outlets powered throughout my entire house. I don't have to run extension cords from this all the way to my kitchen and then to my bedroom and then to my movie room and then to my office. I don't have to do it. I don't have to spend hundreds of dollars in just extension cords to plug in here. Instead, I take that money, put it into this, and now all the outlets work. That also means that when it comes time to use this, I just plug it in and that's it. It's literally push on the button, flip this on, flip the breaker, in my electrical panel and I've got backup power. Anybody can do that. Now to make sure you don't overload the system, you can simply turn off the breakers that would be using too much power, such as an air conditioner or an electric dryer. As long as those breakers are turned off in your main electrical panel, you're basically turning your main electrical panel into a sub panel. So all that's necessary besides all of this is getting an interlock switch and a generator inlet plug. This is simply just a way to get the power from here into your main electrical panel. So the beauty of this whole system is right now, I can take a hot shower, I can watch TV, I can work, because my Wi-Fi is working, the lights are on in my office. Life is much more normal. So if I wanted to get more power, all I do is get a bigger power station. And if I wanted to make this a full DIY setup, then I'd likely just buy an inverter that already has split phase power and not go with this, because you're gonna have efficiency losses. So really what this is meant for is for people who already have or are only looking at smaller 120 volt solar generators or DIY power stations, and they still need to run something like a well pump. 
in order to have water when you need it the most. Don't run other big electrical stuff off of it. It's just not really meant for that. Now, if you wanna see how I built a DIY solar generator that is literally thousands of dollars less than buying a power station that's already done, click this video up here in the top left and I'll show you exactly how I did that. It's really important to me to have emergency preparedness. Blackouts happen to everybody. Civil unrest can happen. I believe our economy is weak and there are other major factors that are coming down the pipeline. So I really recommend having backup power. It just makes life so much more comfortable and gives you that tactical advantage. Be prepared guys. I'll see you all in the next video.